All right, hey Redemption City. Uh, I've been trying to do some updates uh, the last couple weeks uh, as this uh, COVID-19 crisis is unfolding. Uh, situations are constantly changing. So this week, instead of rolling out any new initiatives, um, we've still got our online gathering. We've still got Zoom calls that you can jump on. Uh, many of your communities now are doing uh, Zoom calls as well. And so uh, we're settling into a bit of a new normal. Um, so instead of launching uh, a bunch of new initiatives, I thought I'd give just a few um, reflections on Holy Week that you can be chatting about with your family or your roommates or whoever uh, you're hanging out with, maybe over a meal uh, together as you're reflecting on the most important week of the year in the Christian calendar. And so uh, first off, I, I wanted uh, just a comment. Um, for those of you who've been following the, fir- the church calendar, um, you know that we're finishing up the uh, season of Lent on Thursday. And so Lent is uh, traditionally a, a season of fasting and prayer and preparation for Holy Week, for Jesus' death, for celebrating Jesus' death and um, resurrection. In Lent, we are uh, literally taking up our cross and following um, Jesus, right? Dying to self. That's the whole idea, that we're, we're walking in the footsteps of Jesus on his way to the cross, that we're preparing uh, our hearts in the same way. So Lent often involves giving up something um, that we love, something that's valuable to us, maybe something that's distracting to us, maybe something that's good, but maybe it's become a little too precious to us, uh, to refocus our affections and our desires and our energies more on Jesus. And so uh, this year for Lent, uh, I was telling everybody I gave up uh, Amazon Prime to uh, curb some of my uh, impulsive consumer decisions. I've been doing some, spending some time in fasting and prayer. Uh, but I think Andy Crouch said it really well when he said, I don't think anybody anticipated how much we'd be giving up for Lent this year. Um, we have, obviously, in the course of this unprecedented uh, public health crisis, had to give up a lot of things that are really valuable to us. Uh, all of our time out at our favorite coffee shops or breweries or restaurants and all of that wonderful time, social time, hanging out with uh, other people, all those things um, have had to be uh, given up and that can be a painful thing and yet on the other hand I've heard uh, numerous people that I've talked to during this season in our church talk about the value of cutting their lives back uh, from all the frenetic pace of life uh, from all the craziness going on and just to be able to spend time with fa- with their family and uh, getting uh, just that unhurried uh, uh, time together that really doesn't happen in our normally frenetic, fast-paced lives. Uh, something about this crisis that has just slowed us down, stripped away all the non-essentials, uh, and we find ourselves with uh, what's really most important. Who are the most important people? What's most important in my life? What are my priorities? And so a season like this, uh, just like the season of Lent, uh, can provide us with an opportunity for understanding what's most important in our lives. And so um, there's some great learnings already going on in Lent and the ways this season is stripping away all those things that we thought were so important um, and give us an opportunity to really come alive again to God and who he is and what he's done and in our lives, in our church, and in our city, and our, in our world throughout this global uh, pandemic. The second thing I want to highlight Um, This Holy Week is that Holy Week gives us some incredible resources for dealing with our own suffering. Uh, The events of Holy Week run the gamut of uh, betrayal, um, Jesus' betrayal by, you know, Judas Iscariot, one of his very own disciples, um, agony in the Garden of Eden as he is praying alone that this cup would be uh, taken away from him, denial by one of his closest disciples, Peter, false accusations from the religious establishment, unjust beatings and crucifixions by the Romans, um, followed by an agonizing death and burial in a borrowed tomb. And so Holy Week, right, gives us so many resources for dealing with suffering. I mean, as a uh, you know, classic description of Jesus in Isaiah 53 says, that he was a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. And we need to be able to tell those who are suffering that God is not aloof, God is not uncaring, God is not unable to relate to our fears and our anxieties and our sorrows, right? The cross reminds us that God came down in the person of Jesus, that he's able to relate to our suffering, to our sorrows, and to our cares. So whatever the reason for this virus and 
We don't know what it is. Um, it's not because God doesn't care. It's not because God doesn't love us. He proved that at the cross. So whatever the reason for this virus is, and there could be, there could be many, um, and we're not going to speculate on what those might be. God only knows. Um, but we know it's not because God doesn't love us and that he can use even uh, situations like this that are devastating in so many ways to so many people uh, throughout the world. He can use it, right, for our good and for his glory. So um, what the cross teaches us is that we, we can trust him, right? He can take the worst, one of the worst, circum the worst circumstance in human history, the execution of the Son of God and turn it to good. So he can take a pandemic, uh, one of these tragic, one of the most tragic global uh, crises to happen in our lifetime, and he can turn it to good. That's the kind of God uh, that he is. And finally, we know how the story ends. Uh, as one preacher has said it, it may be Saturday, but Sunday's coming. Uh, we know uh, the happy ending of Easter. Jesus rises triumphantly uh, from the grave. Death can't hold him down. Um, he is alive and he's seated at the Father's right hand. And so we have this unshakable hope that a virus can't uh, shake, that death itself cannot uh, shake. We have this resurrection hope that we're going to be celebrating this Sunday for Easter. And I hope you can join us uh, for that celebration, even if it's only online. Um, we're going to really get to, to celebrate in the midst of a of a very sorrowful season, and, and that's not a contradiction. The Apostle Paul was sorrowful but always rejoicing. He was able, even in the darkest of times, to see the unshakable hope that we have as Christians because of the resurrection. So I hope these reflections are helpful to you. I hope they help shape your conversations or maybe give you an ability to just frame some of the things we're going through in light of this incredible Holy Week uh, that we're in. I pray that it would just meet you um, in all kinds of powerful, uh, wonderful, and impactful ways. And, uh, and uh, yeah, hoping that this season is a means of grace um, in your life and that as Christians, right, uh, walking through this Holy Week, this unique Holy Week, one in which uh, for the first time in over 2,000 years, the church globally will not be able to meet uh, together in buildings to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus at this Easter. Uh, yeah, these truths would meet you in new and powerful and meaningful ways. So I will look forward to catching you soon on a Zoom call or a phone call or something like that. Uh, but until then, grace and peace.